Hey, morning everybody, uh, wherever you are in the world, hello. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to combine two images. Uh, we're going to use one image as a texture layer, and we're going to just play around in Photoshop, working with layers and mass, a bit of paintbrush work, and a bit of blend mode work. And we're going to go from this Im image, which is the Ministry of Justice in Manchester. It's just a straight architectural image, 20mm 20, 20, uh, wide-angle lens on FX sensor size camera, so a bit of uh, convergence going on up there and a bit of vanishing point work. Um, nice bit of sky. I'm going to use this image as my texture layer. Now this image is um, a handheld long exposure at night time under sodium lamps. It's the Library Walk in Manchester, which is like a stone archway which runs along my library. We're going to combine the two and we're going to end up with something like this. So we've moved from uh, this image, adding this, ending up with this. So you're probably thinking it's going to be mind-bogglingly, uh, excruciatingly hard. Uh, I'm just going to take you through it. As you can see on this side over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. Seven layers. So you're going to learn about layer work. I'm going to show you about masking, uh, and we're going to do, throw uh, some uh, filter blurs in there as well. And we're also going to uh, pop the saturation and do a bit of curves work in it, just to finish things off. So. Without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start with the original image. Uh, as I said, this is a, just a straight architectural image I shot in Manchester last year when the skies were lovely and not in grey and flat and horrible like they are at the moment. Um, we're going to uh, copy this layer. So Control J, Command J, or you want, if you want to, you can just drag it down onto the new layer icon at the bottom. There, we're just going to create a new new layer, and I'm going to call this one Blur, and just enter it. Uh, and I'm going to put some motion blur on this one. What I want to do first of all is to um, spread this image out a bit and I'll show you what's going to happen if I just go to filter, blur and we look at motion blur, which is this one down here. You get this dialog box coming up here and what I want you to do is to type in, highlight that and type in 90 degrees. Now, you don't have to, you might have a, a play around with a little dial in here. This will just change the angle of the blur. You can see what's going on there. That's quite nice. Alter it whatever, but I just want you to work at 90. If you're getting used to this, first of all, let's just put that in there again, and then just play around with your distance. So this is just moving the, the, the pixels about in here. And I really want you to put something in which is, you know, quite a meaty blur. So we're gonna hold it there, about 280. This, if you look at my file size here, this is quite a meaty big file, 48 megabyte, uh, megapixels, uh, megabytes. <laughs> I can't speak English. Uh, so I'm shifting it. 284. I'm going to click OK. And you can see there we've got this blurred layer sitting over the top here. Now what I want you to do is to call up a mask. To do this we need to go down the bottom and this little icon at the bottom here uh, I'm going to click on that and that's just going to put a plain white mask. Now if it's white, white will reveal what's underneath. If we invert it, which is uh, Control I, which will invert it into a black mount. Control or Command I, which will take it back to a uh, white mount. So black will conceal, white will reveal. So we're going to paint on it with a soft paintbrush. Now the paintbrush is over here. Just make sure you're on a paintbrush. Uh, we're going to work in with um, a squishy brush. So choose one which has got one of these blurred edges to it. Make sure the hardness is turned down to here. Uh, it's a decent size at the moment. I'll show you how to resize things as we go along. Just make sure black is your foreground color. If it's not, just toggle with that or hit your X key on your keyboard and that will toggle things back, backwards and forwards. I'm going to work at 20%, so I'm going to hit 2 on my keyboard. If it doesn't work, just click outside the image area and then you can change. Let's just click outside and just change it down to 20% again. So that's, that's just clicking 2. And I want to bring some detail back uh, in here. So remember what black does, it reveals things. So I'm just going to paint in here. And you can see that my mask is highlighted, the, the white edge that runs around the outside of the mask. And you see there, there's some paint being applied to it. I'm just going to put some more over here. This is looking okay. I'm just going to reduce the size of the brush. So I use the square brackets, which is sort of top right hand side of your keyboard. Let's just reduce that. And just to take a bit more of that blurry detail out. I'm quite happy with that. I've blurred a bit of it. I've got some detail coming through. Um, when you do blur things, you sometimes get this sort of odd edge happening. 
Uh, we're not going to worry about that because we're going to blur things again. <laughs> and uh, we're going to make what's called a stamped copy of these two layers. So we're going to go Shift, Alt, Control, and E. Magically, if we just switch these off, that's a stamped copy of the two layers beneath. And now we're going to put some different blur in this one because I'm going to shift this around to, to um, make it look as though we've actually moved the camera during the exposure. So I'm going to go to Filter Blur and I'm going to put some Gaussian Blur in there. And just take it up and really just blur it a bit. So I've lost a lot of detail again in there. And the thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it. So you can either hit V on your keyboard or go up and select your Move tool. And I'm just going to shift it around. Now nothing's happened because it's 100% opacity. But one thing I'm going to do now again is what we did before is to go down to the mask icon here. I'm going to hold the Alt key down and I'm going to click on the mask icon and what that's going to do is going to put a black mask on there for me. So instead of going Control I, which will invert it to white, white to reveal and black to conceal, I've actually just called up by holding the Alt key down when I click on the mask icon, a black mask. And now I'm going to put some blur in again around the edges. I'm going to keep hit to 3 this time to have 30% opacity. And I'm just going to blur up. Right, let's hit it four. You're probably not seeing enough. It helps if I'm in the white anyway. So I'm just going to, and you can see there, it's adding what looks like a bit of movement in there as well. So we're getting some movement running through this. And it's also just knocking out some of that um, lines that ha sometimes happen with the uh, uh, motion blur filter. Now I'm not finished yet because I want to just click on the image part so you get that white ba uh, boundary line coming around the image and hit the V key again which will bring up the move tool. If not just go up to the top there and I'm just going to shunt it around a bit. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because I'm going to transform this slightly and to do that use a shortcut which is Control T or Command T. You'll get the bounding box coming around the outside here and I'm going to scale it and I just want you to hold on the shift key while you're doing this, just to bring this out a bit. And then we're going to just mouse down, release the shift key, mouse down, come back in the middle. And just bring that into there. So we've just shifted that a bit. And then just double click inside it. And we've got this motion blur, but blurry as well. Um, and now time it really to bring across our texture layer. Now you could have a texture layer, you could have leaves, you could have anything you want, anything you want to use as a texture. I've just used this because it's got a bit of colour in it and it's quite a soft image um, to use as a texture layer. I'm going to hold down the shift key, I'm going to make sure that the move tool is uh, selected, so V on your keyboard. So hold the shift key down, I'm going to just mouse down now on the image and I'm going to drag it across. And when I bring it into this picture here, you can see there in the middle there, it says plus on the, on the uh, little icon arrow in the middle. I'm going to release the mouse first and then release the shift key. And that's going to drop it uh, exactly uh, on top of your uh, current stack of layers. So you're probably thinking, what on earth can we do now with this? Well, we're going to use a blend mode on this and we're going to go straight over to our blend modes, which are just here. Nothing to be frightened of. You can play around in these. Try overlay first of all, see what it looks like. Well, that's quite interesting for a start. That's adding uh, this image as an overlay blend mode. Play around with these really, soft light and hard light. Hard light, okay, it might be a bit strong, but you can always take the opacity back. So that's another tool you've got, is fine tuning things with your opacity. I'm really gonna go back to overlay, because I like the effect that's happening there. Let's just uh, click on and off. Uh, and there really you could say well I've finished I mean you could um, that's an interesting image you've changed it you've got sort of motion energy blurring coloring all kinds of things going on um, we can do a stamp copy again so I want you to go shift alt control and E in that order click them down the whirring wheel comes on and we've got merge filter. I'm working with a, a, quite a, a big file here, so it might take some time. I might just skip this and, and come back to you in a second. There, that quite happened quite quickly. Uh, we're going to look at a different uh, blend mode now because I want to just really darken up this bit over here. 
and without using any of my adjustment layers here I'm just going to turn this one into a multiply you see straight away it's quite dark we're going to do that trick again alt and click on the mask icon here that's black to conceal so it's concealing this layer from all those underneath and we're going to choose a soft paintbrush I'm just going to make sure I'm in 20% I hope I don't run out of RAM on this one and I'm just going to darken up this bit here Okay, so that's about it really. Um, you can actually go in and choose a hue saturation above it. Uh, if you don't like the colours that are happening in there, don't forget, uh, just have on master and just play with your hue saturation over the top there. You might like that, don't forget you've got a mask involved here, so go control I on your mask. You might want to add some of that red in there. Just to change things around, you can actually see, you just hold down the lie icon here. Ooh. See before and after, and you've got the opacity to slide up and down to uh, fine tune that. You might want to call up another uh, hue saturation over the top, and maybe take it a different way. And don't forget, Control I, Command I, that'll just invert things. You can actually then just start adding different colors really just by doing that so you create something different um, once you've done it one or two times it becomes a really quick way of uh, playing with your images and don't forget you have the chance to fine tune everything um, if you want to shift or control E if you've got your top layer organized there you'll just bring up uh, a composite of all those below I'm just gonna I was just going to uh, stick those in a group, but I forgot that actually you should really not include the background. So I'm just going to drag that into there and just group those to make it smaller so you can see. And that's it. So we've taken our initial image, which if we go back in time, let's just take a snapshot of where we're up to now. That's what we started with, just a straight architectural shot, nice and sharp, everything, we had a blur and everything to it, um, then we moved across the texture layer, could be any layer, uh, any of your photographs, could be leaves, a stream, water, the seascape, whatever, just think about using a separate image as a texture layer. Uh, once we've, we've uh, done it, we've uh, taken a snapshot, and we've ended up with this. Now you can fine tune it again, go in there, use curves, if you really want to pop the contrast in it, and just either do that, Let's just make sure we're on the right, above the right image, so you can pop the contrast. Let's revert, but you've also got your presets in there as well. So you can use your presets, and don't forget, you've got a mask active. If you don't like what's happening there, hit the X key, just take some of that out. And you can take it out and fine tune it to your heart's content. Okay, that's been a quick one about adding motion blur and texture layers to an architectural image. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, until the next time, it's bye for now.